This episode of the Good Living Now podcast is sponsored by Joy Mo. Now, if you're someone who suffers with erectile dysfunction like I did after going through prostate cancer, get you some Joy Mo. Now, what I love most about Joy Mo is that it's all natural without the side effects found in some prescription medications. Plus, Joy Mode helps with heart health and blood pressure, so it's all good. Now, for more information, visit usejoymode.com. All right, go ahead, get your Joy Mode. On. Welcome to the Good Living Now podcast, where we talk to real people about real change leading to real health. I am your host, Harold LaFall. And today, my guest, well, I met her this summer during the Juicing for Health tour, and she has an amazing story of just resilience, strength, and courage. She was diagnosed with a terminal illness called polycystic kidney disease, PKD. Well, she's here to share her story of how she's not only surviving that disease, but actually thriving. Welcome to the show, Sherry V. Sherry. Hey, Harold. Welcome, welcome. I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Well, you look great. Thank you. You look great. Thank you. It's so, you know... I had to have you on the show after meeting you at the Juicing for Health tour because your story was so inspiring, so impactful. And I don't know, I know you remember this. There was a young lady actually in the audience that actually had the same diagnosis of PKD. And she shared with us that, you know, she didn't even know why she was coming. She didn't even know you were going to be there. She didn't know your story. And your story really inspired her to the point of tears yeah. because it's something that not only she is dealing with, PKD, but her cousin. And uh, you really, you know, were so honest and open about your own, you know, struggle, you mm-hmm. know, with this disease. So, first of all, I know a lot of people don't even know what PKD is because mm-hmm. I did. So tell us what that is, really. Um, It's PKD stands for polycystic kidney disease. And what that is essentially is that there are uh, cysts that develop just in your kidneys, but then they travel. So they can usually be on your sit on your kidney, on your liver. You can have cysts in your pancreas. You can just have cysts, um, you know, develop throughout your lungs, things like that. But it's just essentially just a multi cyst on in one particular area. Mm. And how did you discover that you had it and when? Um, I officially discovered it when I was 16. Um, mm. And it was because my dad passed away. And he passed away from um, kidney failure. And that's all that I knew. Um, then my mother got me tested and they said that I had uh, polycystic kidney disease. And in fact, it was the exact same disease that um, caused his kidney failure and what he died from. Mm. And yeah. did you have like any symptoms or anything or your mom just had you tested? Um, no, I didn't have symptoms. Um, I was 16, so I was still relatively you know, healthy. Um, but when I look back, the symptoms were, you know, swollen eyelids, um, you know, my hands and feet were, would get very, uh, puffy, um, darkness around this area of my face. But, you know, when you're a, you're a teenager, you're we're moving through life, you know, pretty quickly. You're going through all kinds of changes. Yeah. So I didn't think yeah. that, oh, I, my kidneys are bad. Um. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the doctor told her, just get her off of salt. So I remember Mm -hmm. my mom, you know, cooking chicken for us. And she was like, well, Sherry can't eat the salt. So give her just the chicken. I was like, I I don't want that, you know, without enough information to understand why she was trying to cook for me differently just by taking salt out of my diet. But other than that, no, no symptoms, Mm -hmm. no And outside of your dad, did any of your other family members have 
Yes. After I found out, this was years later, maybe 20 years later, in my 30s, I found out that my granddaddy had PKD, um, two of my aunts, and my um, I had a, a uncle as well. Mm-hmm. And I vaguely remember, but I think I am pretty sure that my aunt told me that my great granddad had PKD as well. So it's just been, mm. been generations, you know, of, of things that's been passed down. And for my generation of all my cousins, I'm the only one who who got it. Mm. Who it down to and, and of all of my cousins. Mm. And I, I remember hearing you say that you are the only surviving Mm-hmm. member of your family who's had so did all of of your other family members who had it is that what they passed from that's the majority of what they passed from yes now i do have an aunt who had a kidney transplant mm-hmm. so she didn't um pass away so she had a but she did have a kidney transplant so she does not deal with you know the the everyday symptoms the medication the dialysis, things like that, that um, comes along with the PKD because she, she had a transplant about 10 years ago. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, now, when you were diagnosed though at 16, did they tell you it was, did they tell you it was terminal? Um, yeah, they, they said eventually it would lead to renal failure, um, mm. but I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what that meant, um, but they did you know, kind of allude to that. And then they mm-hmm. just said that, you know, dialysis, they've been pushing dialysis heavy since I've been mm-hmm. seeing, saying that that pretty much is the end goal. But of course, mm-hmm. getting older, understanding what's really happening, dialysis is not the end game. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? And see, and so a lot of people that get that diagnosis actually end up on dialysis, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that makes me think about the young lady that we met at the the event where she, she, you know she was you know so happy to hear your story but upset at the same time because mm-hmm. her cousin she and her cousin both have PKD and her cousin was uh at the point where she was needing to have dialysis mm-hmm. which made that young lady very you know upset you know about what might happen to her, right? You know, um, so f- for for you, did you start getting new information? Did, what was like? What was your your what was your strategy? I guess strategy wise, okay. So from sixteen, probably to thirty four, I paid PKD no attention. Mm. You know, realistically, no attention. Um, I moved out my mom's house at 18. It wasn't, I didn't have enough information to remember, you know, that something is wrong, no symptoms, no nothing that I knew of because I didn't have any information. Um, Fast forward 20 years, I am just going on with my regular day. I'm in school. I pass out. They told me my blood sugar dropped to 50 and I go to the emergency room and now my kidney function is at 19%. Wow. So once I found that out, the, 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 the way they delivered it to me, my doctor was scared. She was like, hey, you need to start prepping for dialysis right now. Um, my daughter was with me. And she was, my daughter was probably 16 at the time. And she was like, well. And how old were you? How old I was 36, 30, mm-hmm. 35, 36. Mm-hmm. And my daughter was 16. And she was like, well, you're going to have to start taking care of your mom. We're going to teach you guys how to, you know, go through the dialysis process because she's got to get ready to go to dialysis. Mm. And the I mean the the doctor she was like they didn't tell you I was like no they didn't tell me anything she said okay well this is the deal she gave us the news and I said I don't want to do that mm-hmm. you know because I understood dialysis because my mom is a nurse so I understood mm-hmm. what dialysis was and I have an aunt who I would see little you know little things that was going on with her with her skin changing 
with, you know, um, just how that was changing over the years. Right. I didn't know why, for real, that it was the disease. Long story short, I had to, I told them, well, give me a year and I'll come back. If I don't make it in a year, then we know what happened. If I come back in a year, just tell me what to do. My doctor was mm -hmm. from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. she, she told me about, you know, just natural things, what to do. She told me to stop eating meat. And she told me that there were things that I could do. So I said, okay, give me a year. I left and I went down the rabbit hole of, of holistic healing, how your body works, what PKD is, what, the, what does it do to you? What does it look like? And Harold, when I tell you, I was scared. I, I didn't eat. Mm -hmm. I completely stopped eating. Mm -hmm. Like no food. I didn't know that I was fasting because I never knew anything about that either. Mm -hmm. um, so for four months, all I did was eat kale and I took a herb. I took herbs. I took spirulina and burdock root. And I was adding them just to my diet based off of the information that I was learning. So mm -hmm. my strategy wasn't really, the strategy was if food was the problem, don't eat. <laughs> right, right, right. To find out what can I eat. Mm -hmm. And I had to build it from there. And I started seeing things change. And I just mm. haven't looked back since. Wow. So that's wow. been the strategy. It's still building. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, once you, once you started making these changes, when you, like, went back to the doctor, did they notice any changes or improvement in your kidney function? Carol. When I left, I was 19% the first time. Mm -hmm. This was eight years ago. When I came back, just from eating no food, just having the herbs, my kidney function was 64%. Wow. It jumped back up. Back up. Wow. Now, what did I your doctor say? What did your doctor say? She, she couldn't believe it. She was like, yeah. what happened? What, are you, what have you been doing? I said, I literally only have been taking herbs and eating kale. Mm. That was it. Now, mm. in that process, the herbs, I was taking like Dr. Savi's herbs. I had went to California when my daughter was 17. So within this year, that first year, I went to California, went to Dr. Savi's office. I got the whole, everything I could possibly get. Right. And I came home in those four months is what I was just obsessed with. You know, mm -hmm. because it felt like it was a life or death situation for me. Mm -hmm. um, and she couldn't believe it. She was like, OK, your kidney function is up, but now you're 90 pounds. Mm. You know, now you have to build your body back up because, you know, you, you want to be healthy on paper, but you want to present and be healthy as well, because I knew I was frail. I was skinny, mm. you know, 35 years old, 90 pounds. Mm. Mm. Wow. You know, and um, so um, she couldn't believe it. And I said, well, they still tried to put me on blood pressure medication, which I, I, I agreed to, but it didn't feel right. It gave me a headache. My blood pressure dropped too low. She said it was to protect my kidneys, but I didn't understand how feeling worse with the lower blood pressure was protecting my kidneys. So after mm. about four months, I just, I got off of mm. it. <laughs> and, and sometimes like with kidney, when your, your kidneys are not functioning properly, that will affect your blood pressure. It will often lead to you having a higher blood pressure, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, when I first went, my blood pressure was through the roof, you know, mm. and um, because I'm a cosmetologist, I always think that, my back is hurting because I'm I'm working. My feet mm -hmm. are swollen because I'm standing up on them 10 hours a day. Um, like it used to swell up really bad right here. And I didn't know that. I thought because I'm, you know, I'm working that mm. that was be that was from work, not because my body could not, you know, this is, you know, one of your lymph nodes and it was, it's probably backed up and my kidneys mm. are and I'm, I have too much salt. They're not filtering. That's why my eyelids are swollen when I wake up. My hands and feet are like sausages when I wake up. Mm -hmm. Or I'm bloated. Didn't understand mm -hmm. that that was from inflammation. But um, now that I know, 
when I see those things, I'm like, okay, that food gets crossed off your list. You can't do mm-hmm. that. Right, right. You right. know, like this doesn't work for you. So that doesn't work. So I just started processing things and adding mm-hmm. and taking away until I found what works best. Mm-hmm. You know, so. So what would you say to someone like the young lady that we met in Atlanta Mm -hmm. that may be dealing with PKD? You know, what would you say to them? Because that's a scary diagnosis to get. It is scary. It is scary. And that was, that would be the first thing I would tell them. It's not a death sentence, Mm -hmm. you know, because I absolutely thought it was a death sentence and Not only did I think it, but I saw it as a death sentence because my dad, my aunt, and everybody had Mm -hmm. passed away. So all I knew was the end game is you're going to die, Mm -hmm. you know, and you have to wait to die because there's no information in the gray area between, you know, 19% or whatever your kidney function percent is and dialysis, which is 10%. 15 percent mm. there's no information in the gray area to give you to show you what you can do to get your power back or even to live mm-hmm. without thinking that everything is going to hurt you right so i would definitely first say you know it's not a death sentence and then the second thing would be you know it's in your mind first you know whatever your mind says your body will follow so don't think you're sick Mm. You know, don't tell yourself, oh, this is going to hurt me. This is going to kill me. Mm. You know, there were plenty of days that I looked at myself while I was outside meditating and I said, hey, if we're going to live in this body, I will Mm. not suffer from this. You know, Mm. I will tell you what we're going to do today. I'm going to say what we're going to eat today. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to be able to, you know, mentally get yourself together and it takes time. Mm -hmm. I can't talk to you now, but I even have days now where every morning it tries to hit you when you wake up. And Mm -hmm. I have to tell myself, not today. Today you Mm -hmm. are made in the image of God. Like no Mm -hmm. sickness has no dominion over your body today. Mm -hmm. And then you get up and you do things that work for you so you can take your power back decision by decision. Mm -hmm. So those would be some of the things that we would start with um, because I don't feel like it's effective to tell someone, hey, just stop eating meat and drink water for 30 days. Right, 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 right. You know, yeah. it took me six yeah. years to get here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you had to figure it out in this trial, trial and error, yeah. trial, trial and error. Yeah. And uh, But now, you know, you are truly eating to live, right? Yes, absolutely. And you're helping other folks, you know, eat to live. Like I know you brought those good old juices to to the um, Juicy for Health tour. Everybody was raving about it. I didn't even get any. What was it? What did you have? What did you make? I made a, a green juice with uh-huh. celery, parsley, cucumber in it, and I made um, a watermelon juice with watermelon and pineapple mm. and ginger. And our orange juice is one of my favorite. It has um, oranges, apples, and grapefruits in it. Mm, that sounds good. I'm gonna have to ship you some. Well, if you come to it, yeah, yeah, send me some because I didn't get none. Everybody was saying, Oh my god, some juices. They they thought I made them. I'm like, nah, I didn't make them. But uh <laughs> but yeah, they loved them. But now you know you're really helping other people with your story and helping other people know that they that a diagnosis is not a death sentence, like no. you said, no. and that you can really change your outcome, you know that it doesn't have to be, you know, this this thing that you're going to die from. If yeah. you treat your body right, it'll treat you right. 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 Yeah. yeah. And with that with that being said, you know, I I set out. I'm just a very strong will person. Like if you tell me no, I'm going to say, uh, no, it's not yet. I'm going to find a way. So at first I set out to just hands down cure cure myself. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. that's the goal. Um, Mm -hmm. But along the way, that's a heavy thing to carry also, Mm -hmm. 
you know, just to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to heal myself. And especially if you go to the doctor, you check on yourself and they're saying, you're not here, you're here. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you go and you've been eating a certain way and you think you're here and again, they knock you back down. So if you just know that, you know, maintenance is it. If it took you 30 years to get here, it's going to take you time to get out of it. You know, Mm -hmm. if you ate your way into it, eat your way out of it. You know, Mm -hmm. if you just know that it'll take time, that it'll work. And now I just know that over time it'll get better. But my goal is under here. Curing is still, but here is maintenance and to Mm -hmm. see progress because progress is really the goal. Because even if all the cysts go away, I'm not going to go back to the way I was living before. Right. Because now right. I have to develop a different way of living and seeing foods and understanding that it's a God's food. How, how, how does it not work for me? How mm-hmm. does it not work if, if God made it? it? It makes no sense to me. So I can't go back. Right. Yeah. You know. And so, so mm-hmm. I know you're not just eating kale. Every day. What, what, no, what's like a no typical, more. what's a typical day of eating for you now? <laughs> yeah, not no more. Realistically, I couldn't. You know, mm-hmm. it sounds good for us to say, oh, I juice and eat all this. But realistically, every day it doesn't work that way. Right. Um, so a typical day for me now is um, I will get up and I have mangoes or just hand fruits that I can grab real quick. I've been on mangoes for about two months now. Mm-hmm. No one told me they were so good. But <laughs> I have about two mangoes um, in the morning and with my herbs, with some supplements that I take, of usually a detox and some greens or uh, something like that. And then I'll have a herbal tea that has mm-hmm. things in there for my kidneys. Um, and then I will have a juice. Mm-hmm. I don't eat anything really until about no later than four Mm-hmm. Four o'clock, but I'm on juice. I drink a liter of juice. Sometimes it's green. Most likely, I try to make sure it's green. If not, it's watermelon or the orange or whatever one I have. And then if I eat some food, it would be a salad. I've been making this salad lately, and it's been so good. It's just a salad. And what's in it? The base of it is cilantro, parsley, and um. I've been putting dandelion greens in it, in kale. Mm -hmm. And then I have cucumbers, chickpeas, onions, tomato, avocado, and dried cranberries. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Damn, cranberries. (laughs) And I said, nobody told me. So that's what I I would eat. Um, I've been Uh eating that every day for like the last two months. Prior to that, me like really transitioning into like raw foods, um, I would eat sweet potatoes um, with that same salad, but I have like a sweet potato on the side, um, but I haven't had, you know, meat, fish or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just um, things like that. If I need rice, I'll eat black rice, but Mm -hmm. um, chicken. And you know what? I just learned about black rice probably about seven months ago. And Pitt, a lot of people don't know about black rice. Mm-hmm. Look, you just let it soak overnight, and that you get to go the next morning. You yeah, don't have to cook it or nothing. That black rice is amazing, isn't it? Yes, I'm telling you, I love rice anyway. So that was honestly meat wasn't even my issue. It was getting mm-hmm. all the white rice and mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that had me in a chokehold. So <laughs> I can. <laughs> So now if I can eat a uh, brown rice, I mean, not brown because I don't eat brown rice, but the black rice. Black rice. Yeah, that black rice is, I mean, I just buy it and I just soak the whole thing. I put it on everything. I put it on salads. I put it on all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yes. The, that and those chickpeas, if I have to just need some kind of substance, uh-huh. and the chickpeas and that black rice with everything that I named in that salad, I would eat all of that in a bowl. Yeah. yeah. I learned that. You know, Harold, they have trained us so well when we go out to eat that our fruit, you know, when we get fruit, it's a little appetizer on the little side or our salad. Mm-hmm. And then it's 
it was small, and then our entree is huge. And I mm-hmm. said, I've been I under eight for a long time because I thought that, oh, you can't eat that much fruit. Now my salad bowl is huge. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. a half a bunch of everything, a half of this. I would have never imagined I would eat that much, those much, that much vegetables as a meal. Even eating a grapefruit, two apples, and an orange for breakfast. Mm-hmm. I would like, say that's that's <laughs> the key, you know. Right. They train right. us not to eat as much because they give us our fruits and vegetables at a small size. Small yeah. When it really needs to be opposite. A bit exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, so we need enough food um, to eat. And again, those chickpeas and that black rice. That's it. Uh, that's Life, it. Life, <laughs> Life safe. Now, the juice company. So mm-hmm. you made the juice. Bus. So you got a juice company, too. So yeah. you provide juices for folks who are on their healing journey. They can get some of those delicious juice. Tell us about the juice company, the name of it, and how they folks can find it. Okay, so Veg Head Alkaline Juice Co. is the name. And we came up with Veg Head um, just because I knew juicing wasn't just about the fruits. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, what? Well, how, how do I juice it? And I found myself juicing celery and juicing mm-hmm. all kind of parsley and cilantro. I never even had cilantro prior to juicing it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even parsley, all these vegetables that I juice, I never ate them at all. Right, um, right. So, so we came up with veg hair because I was like, that's what I am now. That's just what I am. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny, you know, when not even funny, it's so interesting when I just look back on my childhood, fruits and vegetables just was not a part of our regular diet. It mm-hmm. just it just wasn't. And so even as an, a young adult. I wasn't eating fruits and vegetables. It Mm -hmm. wasn't until I got, you know, a diagnosis that I, you know, that I realized, wait a minute, what am I doing? Yeah. I think a lot of times we just are so unconscious about what we put in our body. Yeah. We get a diagnosis. You know, we don't think of, we don't think enough uh, about what we put in our bodies. Yeah. Because, you know, subconsciously, these are the things that our parents gave us that we thought, you know, you would think, oh, my mom's giving me something that's good for me. Mm-hmm. You know, chicken never hurt me before. So mm-hmm. why would I think chicken is hurting me now? Or, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. And we just, we didn't know. And it's very hard to transition off of eating meat because because of that. And you're like, well, you start asking yourself, well, what can I eat? Mm-hmm. And, but now you have to start opening your eyes to everything that you can eat. Instead mm-hmm. of asking, what can I eat? Ask yourself, what can I eat? And it just opened up a whole world of fruits and vegetables to me. And I was like, oh, it's it's more greens than cabbage? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, it's kale I can eat instead of collard greens? Mm-hmm. Or um, I thought kale, bless me. <laughs> I thought kale was just the decorations. I used to see kale <laughs> decorations on the table, on the fruit table. Right. At event, I was like, I like, right, right. You know, and all of like the beets and the grapefruits and the, the even the tomatillos, like avocado. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm. You know, I started discovering so many things that I could eat that what I couldn't eat anymore just became less and less important. Mm -hmm. Um, so that helped me. And so trans just going, you know, further with the juicing because I didn't eat them. I didn't like them. Right. Right. So I had to get them in. So I started juicing them. Mm -hmm. And that's where the juicing came in. And I started realizing that the juicing was a lot better and it, it was another level. It was a it was another level. And when I started juicing and understanding if I drink a liter of juice, I just took in a half a watermelon or mm-hmm. ate a half a stalk of celery that I I'm not going to sit down and chew. Mm-hmm. You know, just yeah. being realistically, I'm not going to do it because I don't like the taste of it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Sherry, how has 
Well, let me say this. So for, for me, cancer, and pe people kind of are surprised when I say this, cancer for me was kind of a blessing in disguise mm -hmm. because had I not gotten that diagnosis, I don't know where I would be. So it, it, for me, it has changed me for the better. How has PKD impacted or changed you? You know, that, that <laughs> it has changed everything about me. You know, I had this conversation with my mom the other day and I told her, I said, mom, like, why did I have to have this? And she said, you know what? I think if it was your sister or your brother, they might not even survive what mm -hmm. you have gone through. She said, because your will, you know, has, has came up. And if I wouldn't have had PKD, Sometimes I would, I don't, I, I know for a fact, I wouldn't live intentionally the way I do. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. If I have something to say, I'm going to tell it to you. I'm not going to implode like I used to mm -hmm. do. I'm mm -hmm. not going to, you know, if I want to hug you and I tell you, thank you for being kind to me. I'm going to make sure that anything I need to say is very, is clear and is given to mm -hmm. you. You know, mm -hmm. um, I have a compassion for life. For people, mm -hmm. I hear what people are saying. I can hear what people don't say now. Right. Because I understand now that when I had something going on and I didn't want anybody to know, I didn't know that they could still see it. Mm -hmm. So I pay attention to people a lot more. It changed mm -hmm. my business because I see clients mm -hmm. all the time and I can look at them and talk to them now from a different perspective, not just... Mm -hmm. Let's just exchange money for services. So mm -hmm. that has gone out the window. Now we actually talk and have relationship because I know that if you're going through something on the back end, I'm no better than you. I go through things mm -hmm. on the back end. This is our time to, to fellowship with each other and just get this, you know, and spread information with each other. Mm -hmm. um, anything that I want to do, my procrastination has went from... <laughs> <laughs> here, here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, and 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 I and I and I understand God more. I understand spirit, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. because I see things differently. Yeah. And so yeah. if I didn't have it, I would be probably just still coasting along, just mm -hmm. stressed out, you know, trying to on paper look good with degrees in right. school. Not understanding that, you know, we're here for something else. And I, and I tell God, thank you for choosing me. Thank you for allowing mm -hmm. me to see, see things mm -hmm. differently, you know, because I didn't see it at first. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I only saw what I was taught. Right. That's, that's what I saw. I never saw anything from within. And um, so it, it has changed every relationship with my daughter. You know, I always tell her, even if, even if I never cure PKD mm -hmm. and I just live with it and sustain mm -hmm. it, at least you have seen, my daughter has seen firsthand. An example. Yeah. Example of how to do something. Yeah. You know, if it shows up in another three, four generations, she can be able mm -hmm. to say, hey, my mom, your great, great grandmother had this and this is what she did, you know? Right. Or even knowing how to eat right to say, let's prevent this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and as you know, also, yours was cancer minus PKD, but mm -hmm. the path helps everything. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it yeah. helps lupus. It helps it's everything. 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 Yeah. yeah. So whatever label you want to put on it is fine. It's just the path that mm -hmm. you take, that you show that is doable and it's tangible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's, if I didn't have it, I, I wouldn't be able to show anybody. Right, right, right. You know, wow. and my mom's a nurse and I'm still showing her. She's been a nurse 40 years and she's like, well, right. right, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> look she at said, you. She said, if no one knew that you had PKD, and that your kidney function was low, they wouldn't know because of what you have done. 
Right, and she was right. like, you're not the average kidney patient. And it didn't hit me until she said that. And I was like, yeah, wow. you're right. Because yeah. I have to go in there and tell them, hey, yeah, this is <laughs> Right, right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for you're sharing welcome. your journey and your story. I know so many people are going to be inspired and encouraged because when you start hearing that your kidneys are, quote, failing and they're down to these low percentages, nobody ever talks about the fact that that can be reversed. You yeah. think that that is that's the end. Yeah. But you are showing and proving that that is not. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. And I, yeah. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah. Now, if folks want to find you on social media, if they want to get some of them good juices or learn how to make some of them good old salads you got, how, how can they find you? On Instagram, um, my name is underscore underscore Sherry Vegan. It's S-H-E-R-R-I-V-E-G-A-N. Um, and you can DM me. Um, we do have a link for the website. The website has um, herbal supplements. It has um, the juices on there. The herbal teas that I drink um, are on there. So that's where I can be um, contacted at. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Sherry B, thank you for showing us what it looks like to not only survive, but to thrive in spite of a, a terminal, what they call a terminal disease. Right. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.